Well, there is Bradley Wiggins now. He's getting ready to be receive a huge accolade as he comes on to the Champs-Élysées. Chris Froome, who's going to finish second overall in this race, has come up alongside him on his left shoulder there. As the riders now, they're lifting the tempo ever so slightly, but the pressure will go on as they run down towards the entry onto the Place de la Concorde. First and second will go to British riders by the end of this day. Bradley Wiggins in yellow, uh, the first British rider to bring the yellow jersey home for Great Britain. And uh, I must say, his team, Sky, have dominated the Tour de France. No one really was allowed to put in any serious attack. So team Sky, bring them home here. And George Hincapi, the American, 17 Tours de France, an absolute record. They've given him the right away. A big proud moment for George Hincapi this. He retires this year. He's had 19 years as a pro and he's ridden the Tour de France a record 17 times and he's worn the yellow jersey, albeit only once. The Madeleine in the backdrop as they make the right. This will be the last corner in eight laps time for the sprinters. But right now that long line of riders no longer a tourist ride around France. It is now back to the last stage. The crowd welcome them home. Londoner Bradley Wiggins is now coming very, very close to being crowned the winner of the Tour de France. He is running out uh, very, very nicely. His one ambition left is to lead Mark Cavendish to a sprint win. And uh, first of all, a little matter of 11 riders who are still 25 seconds in front. Everybody's getting in the right position in the peloton, but there's still 20 seconds. It went up to 25, it's back to 20. And we're going out across the Place de la Concorde again. The main field, though, Phil, I think they're pretty much in control of the situation. Uh, now they've got multiple teams working at the front end. This is Michael Rogers from Canberra in the ACT, followed by Richie Port. Then the liquid gas riders have got three, four riders, five riders at the front end of this main field. And mixing it in with them is Orica Greenedge. It's going to be, I think, Phil, a massive big sprint on the final lap. Well, as we go under the uh, shadow of Joan of Arc here, round Norwegian corner. The peloton are closing in. As Sean Yates, by the way, who is travelling in the team car, he is the director sportive for manager of Team Sky on the road. He has just sent out a message and said, lads, it's time to bring them back. You've got to get them back on this lap. We are now on the penultimate lap of the Tour de France as we head up towards the top of the Champs-Élysées, up under the shadow of the Arc de Triomphe. They are building, bringing the breakaway back, but now all of a sudden three men have gone ahead of those 11 and they've still got 20 seconds at the front end of the field. Team Sky are trying now desperately. The orders have gone out to the team to bring the breakaway back on this lap. They need the last lap to set up the sprint. Well, this is a nail-biter now, and this is not the way it's supposed to happen. Team Sky have got the best sprinter in the race, but three riders are spoiling it. The clock is saying 21 seconds. Someone is going to have to make a superhuman effort from that bunch to put the sprinters back in the Tour de France for the finish. We swing onto the Champs-Élysées. It's the bell this lap. These three riders have suddenly come back to just 16 seconds, but they'll get the bell. They will be inspired. Jens Voigt leads the charge, and the peloton with Mark Cavendish and Bradley Wiggins and Chris Froome are just 16 seconds behind. The three leaders are through. The bell continues to ring. It is desperate moments now. Ten seconds is the gap now, and uh, Jens Voigt, if he looks back over his shoulder, he will see a charging beast, and it's called the Peloton in cycling, and it's led there by Team Saxo Bank. Now, Mark Cavendish has never lost a finish on the Champs-Élysées. He's been here three times. He's won every time. I think there's a crash in the Peloton. Somebody's gone down. Well, well, that is a real shame. Two riders down there, one from AG2R, I think, and one from Lamprey. Well, uh, this is uh, how dangerous this race is going to be, and everyone is taking risks. It looks as if that's Danilo Hondo on the far side there, one of the sprinters. It happened, I think, right up in the front of the main field. Hondo just touching the wheel there of a rider in front of him, and he went down very, very hard indeed. It doesn't affect any of the riders sitting at the front end of the main field, but it just goes to exaggerate how dangerous the Tour de France can be on any kilometre of this 4,000 journey, around 4,000 kilometre journey around France. They are just about all together now, as we 
Wiggins also moving into position, but Cavendish got to know that over his shoulder is Peter Sagan, who's won three stages of this tour as well this time. The race radio now is saying uh, Gruppo Compacto in Italian, which means the group is now back all together. They're all together, but they're very, very stressed indeed. But Team Sky have organised themselves. They've got the front of the, bun the bunch here. Wiggins, the leader and soon-to-be winner of the Tour de France, moves into second place behind Michael Rogers. Edward Boysenhagen is third. Mark Cavendish is fourth. Peter Sagan, who will challenge him, is in the all-green jersey. We're going underground for the last time and it'll be all action when they come out because they'll be one and a half kilometres from the finish. And now Bradley Wiggins, the winner of the Tour de France, is moving Edward Boysenhagen in front of Mark Cavendish. The Sky Train is all set to roll at one kilometre to go. Well, they're inside of one kilometre to go. It's a big battle to try and get into the slipstream of Mark Cavendish. This man who was a, a Olympic gold medalist in the individual pursuit, Bradley Wiggins, is eating his heart out right now for his teammate behind him. He wants to pay back the world champion, but there's a lead out trying to come by there from Orica Greenedge, and that, of course, was Albacini. Now. now as we go now is the lineup for the finish. It's Edward Boysenhagen and Brent in perfect position, but watch out, Sagan is on the offside as we're heading up towards the final turn. This is a brilliant lead out by the champion of Norway on Team Sky. Boysenhagen, it's a perfect finish for Mark Cavendish. He's brought into the straight so far ahead. It's familiar. The missile is firing and he doesn't get past. Look at his face. He makes it look all too easy, but that is the story of the Tour de France. Has he yet? Yeah, Yes, he's clear. Mark Cavendish gets four out of four wins in the last four years in Paris. This is the end of a perfect Tour de France for Great Britain. Sagan would have got second there. The yellow jersey for Bradley Wiggins, the first ever to win for Great Britain. He shakes hands with Michael Rogers of Australia. Behind Wiggins is Chris Froome, who finishes second. It just is all too perfect. This man is very, very special. This is Mark Cavendish here. He's got his uh, full flight on when he comes up to the finishing line. And there's nobody else in the photo there. He puts four hands up to say, four times I have been the winner here on the Champs-Élysées. And that extends his tally of victories on stages of the Tour de France to 23.